Hey guys, Mr. Klein here. We are talking about mass wasting and glaciers. That's chapter 6, lesson 3 in your textbook. Let's go ahead and get, let's get started. Uh, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to answer the following questions. Number one, what are some ways that gravity shapes the Earth's surface? And number two, how do glaciers erode Earth's surface? Now, we know erosion is the carrying of material by uh, wind, water, waves, things like that, but also gravity has a great deal to do with this and a uh, term that we use for erosion through uh, gravity so we call mass wasting and that's the downhill movement of a large mass of rocks or soil because of the pull of gravity now mass wasting usually occurs on the side of a hill when the soil is really really soaked with wa rainwater uh, a lot of times you'll see that in a photo like this right here okay this is a landslide uh, blew through a town. You see the little people uh, right here. They should give you the size of this. It occurs after a rainstorm. A lot of times you might hear about a landslide on the news uh, in Central America or South America where cities are built on hillsides and like the mountain gives way. Or even in California after large amounts of rainfall uh, you'll have collapses. Uh, the cover photo for this was in Taiwan. Uh, after rainfall uh, a piece of the mountain gave way, slid down, unfortunately trapped uh, several cars, and uh, people were killed in it. But if you see, the uh, overpass uh, right there was pushed through the force of the earth. And uh, that's what usually happens is they get soaked with rainwater and the force of gravity becomes too much and it gets pulled down. Now, generally what we use to prevent uh, mass wasting is generally thick vegetation but like in this photo right here you see that doesn't always happen because what happens is the roots stick into the ground and what will generally happen is it'll keep the dirt from moving or coming loose because of the water now the rapid downhill movement of soil loose rocks and boulders is what we call a landslide landslides can happen pretty quickly and it'll come at you really quickly and so this little video clip from YouTube I'll show you uh, is of a landslide in British Columbia as it's caught on camera uh, these reporters got off and got into the boat on the lake reporting on another landslide and next thing you know kapow five minutes later uh, landslides giving way okay and so all those trees used to be standing but the force of the mass of the uh, earth being pushed out uh, pushed them away and see there's some other reporters getting away in their boat and yes those trees are uh, were on the hill previously before they got pushed out by the landslide and that's the waves that you see coming in as a result of that now uh, in landslides, such as mudslides and even rock falls, soil moves in a large mass. As you just saw in that, it was just a huge wall of dirt just coming down the hill. Now, uh, and that's essentially erosion because what happened is gravity is pulling on these rocks and dirt and it's just pulling it along and it comes down. Now, erosion is most destructive when a landslide occurs on a steep slope, just like in this photo I just showed you right here. Okay, this was a relatively sleep, steep slope in El Salvador, a lot of rain fell vegetation wasn't enough to hold it down and bam, there it goes and it comes down really quickly. Now, uh, erosion due to mass wasting will continue as long as the force of gravity is greater than other forces holding rock and soil in place. Things like uh, vegetation or man-made structures that will hold them like a retaining wall. Okay, The material from a landslide eventually comes to rest usually in a flat place. And you'll see it if you remember uh, the video on the basin and range uh, formation. I showed you those alluvial fans which were essentially uh, sediment stuff pulled down by landslides and things like that over time. Uh, now this stuff that's come to a rest is what we call talus. Talus is a pile of angular rocks and sediment from a rock fall. So this brown stuff right here, all this dirt and stuff that came from the side of the mountain would be considered talus. And that video you saw up in British Columbia, all the trees and stuff, uh, the dirt that was mixed with it is talus. Now Building on a steep slope can often increase the chance that mass wasting will occur. In addition, like I said before, removing vegetation, even using heavy machinery because of the vibrations will promote mass wasting. But one of the easiest engineering feats that humans have created in order to stop uh, mass wasting from taking place is what we call the retaining wall. And what this is, is this is a wall. This, in this case, is built out of stone. We can use concrete, reinforced brick, whatever. And what it does is it keeps 
uh, the dirt from sliding down. Okay, the wall's built high enough that if it does give way, it will stop it. And everything below it, at, at this slope, uh, you got vegetation stuff holding down to where the steepness of the slope won't get it from falling down. So, that's mass wasting, and that's through that's gravity taking its toll on the ground and moving things. But what about when water and gravity work together? Well, that's what we call a glacier. And a glacier is a large mass of ice that formed on land and moves slowly across Earth's surface. Okay, just to make sure, an iceberg. An iceberg is a big chunk of ice that floats around in the water and sinks large steamships like the Titanic. Okay, that's an iceberg. Icebergs most of the time do come from glaciers. Glaciers on land, when, where they reach the ocean, they'll break apart to form icebergs. This is the Elephant's Foot Iceberg in Greenland. Okay, This huge river of ice is spreading out into the water, and all this ice sitting here used in the water used to be a part of the glacier. Now, glaciers will form when the amount of snowfall is greater than the amount of snow melt. And what essentially happens is this snow keeps on piling on each other, piling on each other, and piling on each other. And under pressure, the lower layers of snow become turn into ice. It gets crystallized into ice crystals. And in the, at, down at ground level, actually, what allows the movement is there's so much pressure that the water gets the melting point of water it's lowered sufficiently to the point that uh, it starts turning into a liquid but because it's under such high pressure it stays as a solid and just like you remember the asthenosphere uh, the the bottom of the glacier essentially becomes a plastic and the glacier slides downhill being pulled down by gravity because of that now there's two main types of glaciers uh, if you use the Brain Pop video series, they'll talk about continental glaciers and valley glaciers, and these are kind of the same thing. Uh, alpine glaciers are glaciers that form in mountains, so those are valley glaciers. They're formed in valleys. And ice sheets, or continental glaciers, cover large areas of land and move outward from central locations. The two main ice sheets in the world today are in Antarctica, in the southern hemisphere, down at the South Pole, and Greenland up in the northern hemisphere, where about 95% of the world's largest island is actually covered in kilometers thick of ice. Now, glaciers will cause erosion as they move, with rocks frozen in the ice carving grooves and underlying surfaces of Earth. Okay, and glacial erosion can actually do macro work. Um, at the micro level, small what we'll have what are called striations, which are essentially scrapes, where rock gets caught in the glacier and as it drags down, you know, only a couple of centimeters per year, about an inch or so, so they move real slowly. Slowly but surely those rocks scrape and they cut away and they carry sediment and rocks, things like that. Okay, glacial erosion can cause sharp ridges called uh, arites, okay, and I just, of course, just butchered the French pronunciation. And they'll also carve out U-shaped and hanging valleys. Uh, here's a good example of the U-shaped valley, okay. This was the floor of the glacier, and the glacier itself cut out these walls. And as you can see, instead of having a valley like with a river where it's kind of steep or even in a canyon, say, it's nice and smooth and rounded because the glacier was pulling and it was dragging all of it. It's pulling out like a bulldozer, essentially. If you've seen on a construction site a bulldozer pushing dirt, a glacier essentially does the same thing. Now, Let's talk about uh, glacial erosion deposition some more. Uh, glaciers will deposit material when they melt. And when they glaciers melt, we call it retreating glaciers because they back up. Uh, either when they flow downhill to warmer places or when the climate gets warmer. Uh, at the end of the Ice Age, you had a lot of glacial deposits that left stuff there. Now, the stuff that's left over is what we call till. And glacial till is a mixture of various sizes of sediment deposited by a glacier. And we'll see it in a couple ways. First off, a mound or ridge of unsorted sediment is what we call a moraine. And a moraine looks kind of like whenever you're at a bulldozer. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the till right here. Okay, so you have large rocks and solar. And you see the till in a moraine like this. And Essentially, it's like a bulldozer that's pushed dirt, and it's just stopped and it backed it up. So there's just this big wall of rocks and, uh, and till that's been left by it. Uh, in addition to the uh, the moraine can have all sorts of sorted sizes, large and small, depending on the size of the glacier. But outwash is layered sediment deposited by streams of water that flow from a melted glacier. So what will happen, especially where a glacier gets near the end, uh, near its terminal area, uh, the glacial water will start melting and so you'll have, uh, you'll have eroded sediments being carried by the water. 
Okay, because it's being carried by water, it's well sorted sand and gravel. And of course, it's sand, not so much clay or uh, clay or silt, because it's uh, it's very it's very finely grained because of, I'm sorry, roughly grained rather because of the, uh, the erosion and the friction being put on by the rocks at the bottom of the glacier. And we'll see that again. So a lot of this this could be considered outwash because it is so fine. Uh, in addition to this, uh, you have other things like glaciers, such as kettle lakes. Kettle lakes are essentially where you have huge rocks and huge glacial deposits, or even what we call orphan ice blocks. Uh, this is in northern Russia right here. And all these are kettle lakes. So at one time, there was this huge glacier that was uh, pushing, during the Ice Age, it was pushing out ice and stuff. And as it started warming up, chunks of ice broke. And so these chunks of ice were pushed into the ground, and essentially they ended up melting, forming these large lakes. So essentially where these big holes are, are essentially where huge chunks of ice were at, and they were melted. You find them all over northern Russia and areas during uh, Finland and things like that, and also in northern Canada, where there was a lot of ice during the Ice Age. Uh, you don't see it so much further south, but you will see them in spots which you'll find a lot of are moraines, uh, especially like this, uh, but over time uh, grass and stuff have grown on top of it uh, near the southern edge of the ice sheets in North America. And the further north you go with the continental ice sheets, the, uh, you'll see we'll see things like this, or in alpine areas, you'll see it like in these pictures right here. So, that's your lesson right here uh, on mass wasting in glaciers. By the end of this lesson, you would have been able to answer the following questions. What are some ways that gravity shapes Earth's surface? Well, gravity shapes Earth's surface through mass wasting, like creep. That's where uh, the mass wasting pulls down very slowly. And what happens, it'll go quickly in landslides, rock falls, and slumps. Now, how do glaciers erode Earth's surface? Well, they erode the Earth's surface by picking up rocks as it flows, and as a result, cutting through the rocks, the glacier passes over. And it makes generally will make U-shaped valleys like this. Uh, it will leave till, which is mess, uh, the eroded sediments and stuff left off as it backs off. And at the end of it, it'll create moraines, which are piles of this rock and soil. And it'll even create lakes like these kettle lakes right here. So there you go. That's your lesson. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.